Hi everyone, uh, my name is Zohar, I'm the CEO of Port, an Israeli-based startup company that helps platform engineers to set up their dev portal in minutes. Um, so today I'm going to talk to, with you about five lessons that both me and Jonathan, my business partner, learned from implementing a dev portal for a very, very large organization with over 1,500 engineers using it daily and what we've learned throughout this process of implementing uh, a dev portal uh, in large organization. So before I dive into the details, uh, I will tell you a little bit about myself and what got me into platform engineering in general. So I used to be the head of platform engineering in, uh, in a very large organization, uh, working with Jonathan uh, closely. I was one of the first employees in a startup company uh, called Rookout in the dev velocity space, uh, dealing with, with helping developers debug their code in production in complex cloud environments. Uh, I also have an experience uh, venture capital uh, background. Uh, I used to be an investor uh, as part of the investment team at TLV Partner, mainly focused on DevOps and dev-oriented companies investments. I'm the co-founder, I used to be the co-founder and CEO of Aporia, an MLOps uh, uh, company helping machine learning engineers to monitor their mo models in production. And today I'm, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Port, uh, which allows platform engineering to set up their own portal uh, fast. So besides the, all the uh, professional uh, background, I really like to play the piano. I do it for many, many years. I go scuba diving uh, once a year. I li really like to do that. And I always love to write code. I do it also today uh, as a CEO. Uh, and this is one of my best hobbies uh, today. So when we started uh, working on the dev portal, uh, both me and Jonathan uh, made many, many mistakes uh, uh, doing that. And we learned a lot throughout the process of uh, building a dev portal for a very large organization. And we learned many, many lessons. And today I'm going to talk with you about five of them that we've learned that we think uh, will be relevant for you if you are in the process of implementing your own portal uh, these days. So the first lesson I think is think like a startup company, right? You are a very unique product team within the company uh, that developing something that revolutionized the way uh, developers interact with infrastructure, interact with each other and so on and so forth. So we highly recommend to start with a very solid use case Choose one use case. It can be uh, some repetitive questions that you always get, like who owns this microservice? Who is on call right now? What is the, jo the Jenkins job link of this failed deployment? And so on and so forth. And try to focus on this specific task, the most repetitive, the most tedious one uh, that, uh, that uh, developers hate, uh, and try to solve that. Uh, this will help you start small, be more agile, and gain their trust over time, right? So it can be a question that you usually receive and you want, might want to give them visualizations of, of, of stuff, or it can be a repetitive action that you're always uh, being uh, requested for, right? To scaffold a new microservice, to get permissions to a cloud resource like S3 bucket, or to add a topic to Kafka and so on and so forth. So choose th the main idea is to choose one thing and be very focused on that and try to solve just this one uh, and get people involved with the dev portal and uh, gain trust and understand the value of using such a, such a concept. Uh, and it's very important to keep it simple over time and don't, don't overcomplicate the portal as you build it uh, and, and you release more and more versions of it over time. The second lesson is to be data driven from day one. So remember, you must be very talented engineers, right? You understand the infrastructure and the way things are architected and so on. But you also need to, uh, to make sure that developers enjoy using your product and you have orga organic adoption uh, of, your, of your product that you are developing uh, because you do something big within the organization. So we highly recommend putting some usage metrics, right? And to put them in a dedicated BI system available for you and for your teammates. Uh, go through the past, right? You have many Jira tickets and Slack channels for all kinds of questions and requests and emails. Try to sum up everything and try to learn what are the main pain points today that you might want to focus on your next release of your dev portal. Um, every request or question that your developers get, so of course, it does not have to be 24-7 uh, support, but every request that you get, might want to be, you might want to document it and to go over it over time and to see if you see some trend regards the experience people have around your product. Uh, weekly usage digest, right? Uh, you want to see 
how people interact with it, and what is the adoption rate of, of the developer portal that you have in, within your organization. So if you have like uh, just like a few and you're stuck somewhere in the middle, it's okay, but you do need to be aware of it. Uh, sit with the developers, talk to them. This is high valuable uh, data and you might hear things that you won't see in the BI system or anywhere else. And I think the most important part is to have solid success metrics uh, of how, what, what, what do you consider a success? Is it the number of tickets that got degraded over time or the number of usage of the portal? Uh, and having that will force you to be data-driven and to think what are your goals as a team within, the, within this organization. The next lesson uh, that we learned is that developers want to feel that you understand them, right? Uh, and one of the main things that helped us gain massive adoption of our portal is to make sure developers have the tools they are used to work with, right? So developers like CLIs and Slackbots and APIs, and they want to feel that you understand their ecosystem. And of course, uh, they, they will also use your web interface, but it will help, us, it will help them uh, gain trust within your uh, um, um, belief of how their portal should look like and will give them easy onboarding to your product. Another point is to allow developers to be in control, right? So each developer or team have different needs or different use cases within the portal. So you might want to allow them to set up custom views. One developer or one team would like to see all the microservices grouped by the ownership, or you have other team maybe that wants to see all the different clusters and who is on call right now. So you want, might want to give people that the dynamically of setting up their custom views that are interesting for them. Um, one other point that I think got, like, got our portal to be very successful is to allow developers to contribute to your, uh, to your own portal. And I know it sounds scary uh, to give people like direct, uh, uh, direct access to your product, but if you have good documentation around it and you put good processes around how to allow people to contribute and what are your guardrails as a product and engineering team, it will help you gain uh, um, uh, a better developer, developer portal to your customers because they will develop things that will help them internally on one hand. On the other hand, you don't have to agree to anything because you are in some way both product managers and engineers and you need to decide what is the direction of the dev portal and what is the vision of uh, this abstraction layer that allows everyone to perform self-service operations. So the last, question, the last point, I think it's very important, right? So you have one shot with every developer that interact with the dev portal for the first time. And you might want to do the launch in a responsible way. And by responsible, I mean to do it gradually. So we highly recommend to start easy. Choose the uh, one champion. Uh, you can see it as an early adopter that is not afraid to work with the shaky product that is not 100% baked. And let them interact with the, with the software. Get, get their, get their uh, feedback, get their buy-in, and get their ideas of what can be better before you launch it in a more scalable way. Once you get a few champions in a few teams, like uh, key users, let's call them, um, be in touch with them and ask them if they think we can go to the next level and have the entire team using it, right? Uh, this will help you gain uh, trust uh, with people that are uh, easy to start with and the rest will come. We also recommend to put and to, to define a solid launch strategy for your, uh, for your uh, portal. So you might want to start with one persona and one team and go uh, farther than that. And be be before you move to the next level, you want to put the success metrics and ask yourself what will get what what will be what will satisfy me before I move on to the next to the next level and put the right success metrics around that. Another cool feature is invites and deep links. So developers really like to share ideas and things they love. So putting invites and allow them to share deep links to specific places within the portal will increase the organic adoption dramatically within your platform. And this is what essentially what you want. You want people to natively interact with the dev portal. You want them to want to, to gain access to the portal and to use all the different features that you provide. 
uh, rather than have have the dev portal as a very solid uh, solid uh, decision that they have to work with the new portal and this is the way we operate right now right you want them to be happy around it so to sum up uh, the five key key takeouts that uh, that that, uh, that we discussed about is to be data driven from day one think like product managers let the developers be in control and allow them to customize the things that they need from your portal because everyone is different. Allow them to interact with the tools they love. And it shows a lot of empathy to developers and also get them easier onboarding to the product. Think like a startup company. Don't overcomplicate each version. Start very small and go from there. And the last point is to launch the dev portal responsibly and put a good, solid launch strategy around that. I think the main idea in this, uh, in this uh, session is to think about the trust that you want to gain from your developers. Because this is the main, uh, the main issue when you put uh, a, a dev portal within a large organization. You want everyone to, to feel confident around it. You want everyone to trust the new uh, initiative of this dev portal. And you, ha you only have one shot with each developer. I really hope that this uh, session will help you uh, um, get the best dev portal that you can you can have uh, in the world. Um, I hope you found it interesting. I will be available on Slack. I will be happy to assist and talk to anyone around uh, platform engineering. I really like this topic. Uh, so feel free to, to, to DM. Uh, and thank you, Platform Common, for arranging this, uh, these um, lectures. Super cool. Uh, see you, everyone. Uh, it was a pleasure. Bye-bye.